Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this ingenious EWS 377 fit Wi-Fi access point. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So what this is, is an 802.11ax 4x4 dual band Wi-Fi access point. So this Wi-Fi access point is targeted towards organizations like small businesses. So Ingenious also has their Ingenious Cloud product. This could probably be described as a more simplified version of that. They are not compatible with each other. This is also not compatible with the NSKY controller. This is its own ecosystem here. But the idea behind this product is if you had a small business and you wanted to add Wi-Fi capabilities or better Wi-Fi capabilities, you could use these Ingenious Fit products. So let's get this open. So this is an 802.11ax 4x4 dual band access point that supports PoE. Let's pull it out. So this insert here has a quick start guide and it has a link to the mobile app. And here's the access point. So this has indicator lights on it for power, network, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. If we turn it over, we can see the bottom side. So it has this cast aluminum here with some heat sinks on it. We have keyhole slots on either side. So you could put some screws into a wall and mount this on it. Here we have a reset button. We have 2.5 gigabit PoE LAN and 12 volt DC power in. So I'll get back to these on how you can power this. Here we have some compliance paperwork and this will be the accessory bag, which has clips in it. I think that's everything there and screws. So these here are made to go on T-Track for like a drop ceiling. You can clip this on the drop ceiling bar. You can also put screws in here and then slide the access point on it. So if we look at the back here, this would slide in here and this little tab will go in here. So clip in and then you can lift on this and it can slide on and off of this bracket. So you can use these keyhole slots or you can use those mounting pieces. So let me clear this off here. So there are three different ways to power this. One is to use 12 volts DC, so there is a 12 volt power jack in there. You can plug a transformer into it and then plug network into here. Now that's my least preferred method. The other two methods involve power over ethernet. That's where you plug a network cable in here and the network cable supplies network connectivity and power. So now I'll show you two options for that. One is a PoE adapter. This is the Ingenious EPA5006 GAT. So this has two components here. It has the PoE injector and it has the power cord. So we'll plug that in. So this will plug into power, obviously. Okay, so here we have two ports. We have the LAN port and the PoE port. So this would be your network would go in here and then you'd have a cable from PoE port to your wireless access point. Then this does have tabs so you can mount it to a board or a wall or something. So this is a good option if you have one or two access points maybe. If you have multiple access points, you'll probably want something like a PoE switch. Now this is an ingenious cloud switch, but they do have an ingenious fit switch. And that would be a good match for this. Although it wouldn't absolutely be required, it would just give you more functionality. But having a PoE switch, you can just plug the access points into the switch and these ports will provide power to the access point. So I'll be using the PoE injector today. So this is made to be set up by someone who may not be as technically proficient as an IT professional. You do still have to have some basic ideas of how things work, but I'm going to try and walk through the steps on how to set this up. So what I have here is a DSL router. This is actually my old router, but it's good for this example. It used to have antennas on here. So this is typical of what a small business might have for their internet. So this might be in a closet somewhere and you might have your Wi-Fi off of this and you'd have your internet going in here, and then you could plug in computers to here. So I'm just going to use this to show how it gets wired in. So I have some network cables here. These are category six network cables. If we look on the cables somewhere here, we see they're cat six. So you really want to use like cat 5e, cat six. You can do some research into the different categories for network cables and figure out which ones are the best for you. But you want to make sure you're not using some of the older standards like cat five, but cat 5e should work. So we can come out of the router like this. We'll go into the LAN port of the PoE injector. We'll come out of that PoE injector and we'll go into the port on the Wi-Fi access point like so. So these two pieces of equipment here might be in your closet together. They might be mounted to a wall. This could be mounted to the wall too. You could have a really short cable here. This cable here, I have a short cable, but this would typically be a longer cable. So this might be a 50 foot cable. So you'll have the cable coming out of here. 
This might be in the middle of a public space or an open area. So the advantage of using power over ethernet and an ethernet cable like this is you only have one wire to run. You can run this single wire to where you want this and you don't have to wire a power outlet. It all runs over this single cable. That makes it very convenient, very easy to run these types of access points. So there may be situations you can run this yourself. There may be situations where you'd have to hire an electrician to do that. So that would be the most basic way you can set this up. So for my actual setup here today, I'm going to unplug this and get rid of this because this is actually old. And I'm just going to plug this into my network switch for now, which you could also do. I have some power over here. I'm going to plug into here, but first let's switch over to my iPad. Okay, so I'm over at my iPad now. Now you could set this up on a smartphone too. I'm just using the iPad for demonstration. So you can scan that QR code on the placard or you can just search for Ingenious Fit and we can see the Ingenious Fit Express here. I'll hit get. So at the time I'm recording this, this is out on iOS and Android, but there will also be a web-based interface for this too. So I'll hit open. It says it would like to send me notifications. I'll say allow. It has a login page. It says don't have an account, create one. So I'll do that. I'm going to skip this part because I'd have to blur everything out. It's pretty straightforward. It will send you a confirmation email that you'll click on in your email to verify your email address. And then your account will be set up. Okay, so the account's set up, so I'll log in. And here it says my networks. So I'll say set up new network. It says the network is the configuration scope and consists of a group of devices. It must include at least one device. I'll hit next. It says power on the device and connect to a DHCP enabled network environment. Make sure the device can reach the internet. So I'll plug the access point in to power. So this will take a little while for it to connect up. I'll hit add device. It says it would like to use my camera. So we'll scan that QR code on the back. Okay, so we have the device information. I'll hit next. It says enter a network site name. So I'll call this Rick Makes Studio. Change my country to US. Now I don't know exactly what it's using this country for, but it may be using it for Wi Fi configuration. So you do want to make sure you have it set correctly. Now we have time zone. Okay, mine Chicago. I'll hit save. There are a lot of time zones on there. Thankfully, you only have to set that once. I'll hit create. It says your network is ready. The newly added device might take five to eight minutes to upgrade the new firmware when it first connects to the Fit Express platform. After the firmware upgrade, your Fit Express devices will be ready to be managed when the power LED is solid on. So if we look at the access point here, we can see the power LED is flashing. When that's solid on, it's ready to go. So I'll hit manage network and we can see the network here. Tap on this. It says attention, I'll tap on that. Nothing yet. So I'll cut the video and I'll come back when that's solid. Okay, this is solid now. So if we look in the app, we have Rick Make Studio. I'll tap on that. And here we have the dashboard. We can tap on the access point and this will bring the access point up. We can tap on that. And now we have all this information on our access point. We have the IP address and such. I'll scroll down. We have tools, we have activity. We can see the activity here. There's no activity on it yet. We have speed tests, connectivity tests, live clients, LED lights, things like that. You can even add a photo here. So you can use this to manage multiple networks. So having a photo might help you remember where you put an access point. So I'll go back to the dashboard. So this comes pre-configured with the Wi-Fi setup. So I'll tap on Wi-Fi here and it comes with two Wi-Fi networks set up by default. So we have the guest network, I'll tap on it. So you can segregate your traffic. Say you're a graphic design studio and you want Wi-Fi for your employees, but then you might have clients come to the office and they may want to connect their equipment. You could have a guest Wi-Fi access point for them. So there are different options here. You can have it open, you can use a password, or you can use a portal. This is like where you go to an access point and it takes you to a web page to log in. we we'll go to more options here. So under more options, we have VLAN ID. That's for further segregating your network traffic. We have network addressing. So you can have the access point issue IP addresses. We have bandwidth limit and Wi-Fi scheduling. So you can limit how much internet guests can use, and then you can have it turn off automatically after hours. So I'm going to turn the guest network off for now. I'll hit save. I'll hit back. Then we'll go to the Fit Staff Wi-Fi. So this looks similar to the guest network. I'll tap on radio here. So we can enable and disable the radios. So the original Wi-Fi was 2.4 gigahertz. That can get crowded, so they added in five gigahertz. Now if 2.4 will typically have longer range, but five gigahertz will support higher speeds. 
So you can use one, the other, or both. I'll just leave both on for now. I'll set a password here. And you will want to set this up because this will be open when you set it up. We can set our security type here. It has WPA2 PSK and WPA2 plus WPA3 personal. So I'm going to switch to the second option. I'll hit save and then I'll enter in a password here. I'll tap more options and we see the same options we had on guest. I forgot, I also want to change the name of this SSID. So I'll change that to Rick Makes Studio and I'll hit save. Now go back. So this is the default configuration. We can hit the plus in the upper right here and create other Wi-Fi networks. So you could set different network parameters for different requirements. So let's go back to the dashboard. So we have one access point, no switch, two Wi-Fi, one VLAN, zero clients. Let me connect my laptop as a client. Okay, so I'm on my Mac here. I'll go to the Wi-Fi icon on the top. I'll go to other networks. I'll choose Rick Make Studio. I'll enter in my password. I'll hit join. Now if I hit option and click the Wi-Fi icon on my Mac, it will show me some stats here. So it says I'm connected with WPA3 personal and I'm connected at five gigahertz. So now I'll open up my web browser. So I have a speed test running on a network server. So I have gigabit ethernet running to this access point. So I'll do a speed test here. Oh, and I should mention this is a 2015 MacBook Pro. So this is an older computer. But you can see here that I'm getting near gigabit speeds out of it. So you're going to get faster speeds out of the five gigahertz frequency and you'll have slower speeds out of the 2.4 gigahertz. But here you see we had 917 download and 721 upload. Now if we go back to the app, I'll hit client here and we can see the MacBook Pro new and we have the client detail here. There's not a lot we can figure here, except for on the bottom it says access control. We'll tap on that. And it says, what Wi-Fi network should this client be blocked from connecting to? So if you have someone that is abusing your network, you can block them. So say you have a guest network and the business next door is stealing your guest Wi-Fi, you can go in here and block them. So I'm guessing this blocking is using MAC addresses. So it can be tricky to block these days because some devices will actually rotate their MAC addresses, but it should work in the short term. So that's the basics of setting up an ingenious EWS 377 fit Wi-Fi access point. So I showed how to set this up in the app using the cloud management. You can also get a local controller for this if you don't want to use cloud management. I really do like cloud management though. If you have multiple small businesses, you can set up your networks in each one and you can control them centrally. You can also set up different admin users. So this is a great option for small businesses that want to manage their own Wi-Fi. I really like how easy this was to set up. I've had devices like printers that were way harder to set up than this access point. Now, once these are set up, these will automatically update themselves too. So if there's some kind of vulnerability that is found in these, it will receive those firmware updates automatically. Now, I don't want to make the claim that these are infallible and no one could ever hack them. You can't say that about any access point, but I believe one of the biggest problems with network equipment is when they fall out of maintenance. A lot of people will buy an access point, they'll set it up and they will forget it, and the software will fall out of date, a vulnerability will come around, and it gets hacked. Using a system like this, I think lowers the probability of that happening because it is cloud managed. Of course, this is only one tier of your security. You still need to make sure your web browsing is using HTTPS and things like that. But this brings enterprise style Wi-Fi and reach of small business customers. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.